<laughs> right up. Yeah, that would be awesome. All right, guys, we are back. This is, of course, the MWO Tournament Series First Engagement Beta brought to you by IGP, PGI, and NGNG. This is, of course, Darren and Phil from No Guts, No Galaxy, and we're joined today by the Magician and Raffle Waffle doing in-game commentary, so a big thank you to you guys, as well as a big thank you to Farpa Noodle for the amazing overlay. Phil can get into that later, and Deadfire for helping behind the scenes, and we got Brandon Catrakel helping out right now. And for everybody else helping out, we totally appreciate all your work. It's a huge difference. And also, please remember, everybody, spectator mode is in testing. It's in early testing, so it's going to get better, much better, as soon as possible, but uh, just bear with us. For, it's what we got now, and, you know, I think it looks darn good compared to what we used to have, which was nothing. Um, also remember, there will be a giveaway before the final match tonight. That give match will be the 228th IBR versus Death Meta Band. So we'll do a $15 Ultimate Game Card giveaway before that, uh, which in, that's about 3,000 MC uh, in Mech Warrior Online. And of course, don't forget to follow on the button down here on the Twitch screen. Um, if you follow us, you'll know every time we're going live with the tournament, as well as our regular Monday through Friday streaming that uh, Phil and I do. Uh, every single week so be sure to do that and uh yeah we had a great match well i mean it was fun to watch but it wasn't great for aces last the first match of the second round aces versus the 12th Donegal guards 12th Donegal guards taking that win we've got uh coming up on terrace scorpions versus black star alliance uh match will get a little bit more into that but before we start i just want to ask you guys uh obviously the first round we saw forest colony colony with uh, skirmish mode this week we or this round we see frozen city with conquest what are the, some of the differences uh, we can expect to see between these different maps and these different uh, uh, game modes? So last week we saw a lot of uh, fairly passive play. Uh, Forest Colony is a fairly wide open map. There are only one or two uh, applicable routes to take to a brawl. And there isn't an object objective. So you're going to be playing passive. You're going to be waiting for your opponent to make a mistake. But in Conquest, you have to kind of force that decision. Uh, there are points to be taken, there's a counter to be watched, and everything's sort of on this ticking clock. And on a map like uh, Frozen City Night, there's a lot of close-range combat. The buildings make uh, sniping a lot harder, make things like LRMs really hard, and so with such close quarters and the ticking clock of the Conquest game mode, you're probably going to see a lot of brawling. Uh, the first game we saw, we saw a very tight brawl, and I think that that's going to be uh, a fairly predominant thing throughout this uh, the second round. Indicative of the matches to come. So, Badge, you know a little bit about these uh, next two teams, right? Yeah, so Interior Scorpions, they're a long-time competitive team in MWO. They've been around since the, much the very beginning. Uh, they've gone up and down a little bit, but they lost some players to Blackstone Knights, who actually then recently returned and have boosted this team back up, and I see them moving back up into the higher ranks. Uh, they've, they're competing right now in Arhad as well as MRBC, and they've had some mixed results, but overall they've done pretty well. And then with Black Star Alliance, this is a team that has mostly focused on Merrick Civil War, but has done really well. I believe they've won uh, 9 out of the last 12 matches. And a lot of people are saying, hey, this is a team that is a rising star. They're coming up in the scene, and we expect good things out of them. Uh, in that first round, BSA defeated HA 007, and 007 has been one of those teams that's been at the top tier for a while now, and that was a really, really solid win. That, and I think the people who watch the scene are, or maybe were a little bit surprised by that match, but BSA showed that they could play that, you know, that high tier quality of a game. So these, this should be a really interesting game, and it, it should be a, a very competitive match. Excellent. And we're joined again by Serio. How you doing, man? Not too badly. Just rushed home from work and ready to cast this. Welcome oh, back. Yeah. Yeah, so did you get uh, up to speed on the first match? Yes. Uh, it was an unfortunate in chat. Yeah. <laughs> unfortunate uh, emergency for one of the Aces members. But, uh, still, good fight, both teams in the upcoming matches. So, Phil, you available now? Yep. Uh, next up, obviously, we have the Antorus Scorpions. I'll go ahead and bring up that uh, match detail for you guys. Um, and of course, this is the overlay we're talking about from Farpa Noodle. Why don't you uh, show it off a little bit there, Phil? Oh, no, it's pretty awesome. Uh, being able to switch between, you know, the next match, uh, you know, I can edit stuff in the background, and then when I save, it saves it, and I can switch between brackets, map info, mech. If we want to talk about a specific map, uh, mech, I can just type in 
uh, for, for instance, maybe it's Centurion 9A. I'm going to pull up that info and, uh, you know, bam, here we go. Uh, it's very versatile, so again, it's pretty awesome. I think a lot of people have enjoyed this. What's even cooler about uh, this whole new overlay system we're using, too, is uh, any future XML updates. Uh, if they introduce any new stats or whatever to the mech files, we can actually have that pull and show as well dynamically. So it's really awesome. And, uh, yeah, it's it's been... It's been very easy to use behind the scenes, getting things done, and uh, I just want to say again, props to Farp. Thank you again so much. He actually helped me. Uh, you'll notice the text may be a little bit easier to read this uh, this time. Um, he did the original overlays in 720p. I got them done in 1080, so the text is a little bit bigger. So, yeah. But uh, yeah, that first match again. Uh, props to Aces. Um, they were already down, you know, 12-11. Um, one of their members had an emergency had to, to run. They had to make some last-minute changes. Um, it's always easy to nitpick, right, when we're sitting on the outside, you know, armchair warriors. Um, they tried, you know, taking one assault, and, and then they also split their lights. I do think if they would have had their lights uh, with the main force, it probably would have turned into a little bit more of a slugfest, would have extended out. But ultimately, I think uh, because of the, the last-minute changes, um, it sort of threw off their plans, which is unfortunate. I think uh, if they'd have had full full 12 members, I think we'd have saw something a little bit different. Uh, but it was a good good attempt uh, for what they were trying to do under the circumstances. All right, so go ahead and looking at the brackets again, we've got uh, alpha bracket here, bracket one. We've already got uh, 12th Donegal guards. Then we have uh, the Russian Jade Falcon versus House of Lords. That'll be tomorrow. Again, you can check all this information out of, out over at the MWMercs.com. Click on the uh, tournament info. They've got a bracket and all that right there for you. Check it all the times. Uh, just double check, you know, maybe if you're a different time zone. Um, let's see what time that lines up with because we're like, oh, Eastern, GMT, you know, Pacific. And some of you guys are like, I live in another country. What does that mean? So... Um, let's go ahead and uh, talk about, uh, you know, Siri, you weren't here on the last one, but how, how much different do drop decks change going from 720 in Skirmish to 600 in Conquest, um, especially on this particular map? What are your thoughts? Well, 720 is right about the way where you start being able to make multiple assaults and without compromising your mid to light end. And it also is the approximate weight where you're allowed to start taking that very heavy salt and light composition. And so obviously out of the 600, we're not going to, going to be seeing that. The most we could get is a, a heavy light split. And that's going to be far less potent, much easier to handle uh, for the light and medium mechs. So generally with the 600, what you're going to see is mediums and lights are going to be the backbone of it and you'll have a sprinkling of a couple heavies in there and so obviously mediums you can't get as much sniper potential on that and this map is much less sniper focused so Grappa was saying we're going to see a hell of a lot more brawling and that's actually what we saw in the last match too and and uh, that was one of the points I made. It's very difficult to keep range with your opponents because of how much cover, concealment, you're able to bound from literally one spot to the next. It allows you to close the distance, and there's not a whole lot of areas of long sight lines on this map. It's not like Forest Colony to where you literally can see right down the middle and to the left side where the water is, right? And the only really way to maneuver under cover is the right side tunnel, but if the team is up near the towers doing their job, they either have seismic or they've got at least a visual knowing that you're in under the arch. So with this, it's a little bit different because of how quickly you can close the distance between, you know, um, enemy forces. So I don't know if we'll see any long range, you know, gameplay. Plus, I think the tonnage comes into play. If you drop any tonnage into, you know, snipers, heavy snipers, maybe cataphracts, um, something like that, you're taken away from, you know, the other 11 members of your team. So I think, you know, we'll see a lot of Shadowhawks again on this next round, possibly. Um, I think the, the biggest difference is what are they going to do with their lights? Are they going to go with the Jenners or the Embers? 
Well, on this map, with the cooling bonus, the general becomes quite an attractive choice. It depends whether you want them to be alive to the end, or more brawling, getting in there, mixing it up, and taking attention off the rest of your mediums heavies uh, to have a bit of flexibility to move, and kind of brawling them up and sacrificing them. Alright, looks yeah, like we have about five minutes left, and then uh, things will be kicking off. So what happened with uh, these two teams? Can we look a little bit more into their previous fights in this tournament, and w how that may reflect on this on this fight with them together? So, um, I'm just I'm looking at the bracket really quick. I know that's just throwing something out there, curveball, but no, no, it's fine. Uh, honestly, I don't know how this match is going to play out. Uh, I don't feel like we saw. At least I don't. I don't feel like I have a good enough understanding just from those last two games that we got to see from each of these teams to know how this one's going to play out. Well, plus um, there's always a bunch of variables and circumstances that can change things immediately, right? Exactly. Uh, we didn't see a lot of error already in that first match, but there is the possibility for it. It's harder to hit, but it does allow you to deny cap points. So if you see a cap point flashing and you can jump jet high and up up in the air and drop an arty strike down on the point. If you're a light, you have to get off, because 40 points of damage to any point, any component on a light mech is devastating, and sometimes game-ending. So we could see good use of air arty, we could see uh, some dual AC-20 Jaeger mechs or something like that. Like there, there are a lot of strategies you could see people employ. I think uh, somebody mentioned earlier that Shadowhawks are, have been fairly dominant, and I, that'll probably continue, but there is room for expansion from that. Now, obviously, I'm not a huge uh, competitive player like you guys, so you can totally tell me if I'm wrong here. But it seems to me, uh, with the first round watching Skirmish on Forest Colony, that being more aggressive typically paid off. Now, obviously, there's always exceptions to the rule. But what I'm wondering is now with Conquest mode and, and this map in particular, is being aggressive going to still pay off in that way? And, and, and maybe, Siri, this is for you because... Uh, maybe in Conquest, it's lights that are more aggressive by capping. Is it is it going to be aggressive capping? Is it going to be you know setting up defensive positions, knowing where they're, the other team's going to be capping? Uh, how does that play into this this match? Yeah, I've got to say that aggression is still going to win you the game. Uh, it's worth noting though that there is both tactical and strategic aggression. Tactical is the obvious one, where you're the one who's making a push to kill the opponent. But strategic could simply be making sure that you're getting up those three points, those four points, and putting the pressure on the opponent to be moving out into you if you have a defensive uh, safe point set up. And even then, when they move out, you're probably going to switch to tactical aggression if you're going to actually want to win that fight. And so, as far as, far as the chair. first round being... Uh, a bit more campy, to be honest. And that was a function of the map and game mode, and on this one, it's definitely going to be quite different. I think there's something to say also that the simplest plan is probably better off, especially when you know you're going to get in action really quick. And what I mean by that is, you know, coordinating, calling targets, taking them out as quick as possible, moving on to the next target. You don't want anything trying, you know, overly sophisticated, like, hey, we're going to move here and do this and that. Once enemy contact is made, knowing where they are, getting that info, you know, to everyone, you know, and just issuing simple, quick orders, quick to understand, and then obviously your lights, you know, weaving in and out and stuff like that. I think if whatever team, if if we both see them, it's who can take out, you know, the, the mediums the quickest, who can, you know, either go for the legs or... You know, maybe it's a, a heavier two, take out those, and just boom, 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 right down the line. I think that's that's the key to success, is being able to take out the enemies as quick as possible, and then just move on to the next. Nothing complicated. And we are just, sounds like invites have been sent to the lobby, and everybody is getting ready, so we should have... Everybody readying up in just a minute here, and then we'll be into the match, which I am excited for. This is, uh, we're talking about a little bit beforehand, and this should be a pretty close game. Yes. Just getting back to the topic of what mechs can be brought, uh, I don't know if you've mentioned this before I got here, but I wouldn't be surprised to see a 
couple like Hunchback 4Ps or other mechs that have lots of energy hard points. Uh, the 4P especially is very good with those 8, those 9 medium lasers up ripping off lights and medium's legs. And in this sort of engagement, 600 tons, that's often what it comes down to, is just legging frickin' everything. And the map is cool, so those will be performing quite well. I still want to see some swaybacks, personally. I want to see a Banshee with, like, two large lasers and six mediums. Really? My question, my question... I said I want to see it. Would you, would you take a swayback? Would you take a sway back over a Shadowhawk? I mean, that AC-20, three mediums, or AC-20, PPC, you can possibly get away with, like, one ER PPC on the Shadowhawk as well because of the heat. Would you take that over a sway back? I mean, jump yeah, jets or no jump jets? Normally way too hot. It depends on what your strategy is. Like, if you're trying to go for just, like, a, a straight push, like, right away, like, that's your goal. Like, maybe you send your lights to cap your, like, whatever point you have on your side. But you instantly ball up your mediums and heavies behind the ridge and then tend to push right away. Then I think swaybacks are okay, because you don't necessarily need those jump jets for maneuverability if you're just going to brawl it out right away. And they also bring a ton of firepower. And especially in such a light drop where you are probably going to want to be shooting for legs, they're really powerful. So I, I I think that they could be viable in the right situation, and I think they're just fun mechs, so I hope to see them. I was going to say, I think we can agree. Um, place an AC-20 shot on a moving Jenner and or a fast-moving medium to one location, especially legs, sometimes it's difficult. Whereas if you're using you know, a sway back with eight mediums, being able to aim directly at a leg take it off or a certain location a little bit easier albeit you know um <laughs> the targets may be jumping around moving but well, looks like we're green so i'm gonna go ahead and shut up you guys got it Alrighty. All right, and we are in. Frozen City Night. Let's do it. All right, so I'm going to go to the drop decks really quick here. And for Antares Scorpions, we got a Spider, two Blackjacks, three Yellow Wings, and six Shadowhawks. For BSA, we're going with four Jenner Ds, two Embers, two Shadowhawks, and four Frax. They're all set up for a Brawler-style build. So yeah, from the Antares Scorpion so. side, basically their deck is as many AC-20s as they could feasibly bring. By using those Blackjacks and Yellow Wings, they're shaving a bit of tonnage off. And same with the Spider. On the other hand, we've got a bit more of a evened out loadout from BSA with the Embers and the uh, Cataphracts. Yeah, and so right off the bat we see both teams, uh, looks like they're not going for cap. Uh, I believe that's BSA is not going for cap. They are actually just rushing over the hill. So we might see a brawl engage right away. And sure enough, these lights are moving in. BSA's lights are already pushing in. We see UAVs go up from multiple teams. Uh, Cataphracts pushing over the hill for BSA right into these mechs. Uh, this is a, a really quick brawl. Neither team even went for their cap point. Positionally, BSA probably has the upper hand. Uh, Antar Scorpions is slightly split by this ridge here. Yep, and we already do see one mech go down for Antares Scorpions, whereas uh, BSA is still holding strong. Uh, we do see air already dropping down on both sides. In a tight brawl like this, however, it's very easy to hit your own mech, so you have to be careful with the placement. And we do see a member of BSA go down. So right now we have a very tight brawl. Every single mech on the field is involved in this. Another mech goes down for uh, BSA as an airstrike, I believe, takes out both of his legs. Uh, we have another mech going down for Antares Scorpions, so the score is currently tied up. Uh, four to four. Oh, I, I lied. Another mech goes down for BSA. This is a very, very close match. Lots of air already, even in very close proximity. So these teams are... It looks like they both just wanted to go from a brawl straight from the beginning. This is interesting. Uh, current score, it looks like a three dead mechs for uh, Antares Scorpions compared to six 
for BSA. So BSA is slowly losing that lead that they had pushing over the hill. It looks like Antares is really taking it to them. We're pulling it back. Uh, they were on the back foot, but now it seems like they're fighting their way back. Uh, still, uh, two more mechs, however, go down for Antares Scorpions. One more for BSA. This is a, a very good brawl. And actually, the kills seem to be evening out. It might be that those embers are just getting longevity and just zombieing and being hard to kill, and they're, they may be pulling it back here. Yeah, it looks like it's currently four mechs to, well, four mechs to it looks like six in favor of BSA and three mechs go down. So BSA has only three mechs remaining. Uh, oh. I, I mean, they're they're fighting, but I think this is going to go to Antares. They're, they're trying. Now that I say that, though, I mean, no, well, it's BSA just D-Max. D-Max is one. the last remaining Jenner. Yeah. They actually brought uh, Jenner D's along with those Embers, and going up against Antares Scorpions, all like mostly medium draw deck, those streaks really aren't going to be doing much. If they had focused on, say, like pure Jenner F's and Embers, they may have gotten better mileage out of that. Yep, and D Max goes down, so the game will go to Antares Scorpions. Uh, a, a close game. I, it's surprising that nobody tried to cap at all. And see, that's actually one thing that kind of tips the opponent off, that you're going to be that aggressive. Uh, those initial few seconds, whether or not that cap is flashing, is a pretty good indicator of if the opponent's going to push you. Uh, one thing to note is that right at the end, uh, the one of the cataphracts on BSA side died with only 43 damage. So even though they're 70 tons, like, when they get ganged on, up on, they are still pretty darn fragile. And if you're investing 70 tons in it and you're only getting, like, sub 50 damage it's pretty much a bad investment yeah that was uh it was fast i have to say i we i think that one of the only reasons we saw caps in the last game that we casted was because of the player deficit and just the way that game sort of played out and so it's interesting that we haven't seen anybody try to go for capping but with light decks like this i mean 600 tons is pretty light and it's a small map so it's hard to go for that cap race. Yeah, but you pretty game. much have to go for an all or nothing deck with like eight, nine lights, and it would still be, it's still a fairly small map, and you wouldn't be able to completely spread out and get away, even if you did have the cap advantage. Yep, so uh, Antares Scorpions takes that match, and they will move on to face the winner of FWLM MGA versus Smoke Adder, which is actually later tonight. All right, so from top-down perspective, again, I basically saw just a total cluster going on. Um, I mean, they basically pushed over the, the, the ridge there. It was just all jumble of mechs circling each other. I mean, literally having 24 mechs in, you know, 200 meters of space is pretty crazy. Um, one thing I will say is I think you're correct, Siri. I, I don't think, don't bring, if you're going to bring lights, bring them, you know, bring the Jenners with six mediums. Uh, there's no, or, or an ember. There's no point for streaks. You don't need to bring a light hunter. You need a medium you know, hunter, you need a heavy hunter. You need something that can, with the mediums, do as much damage. And I just feel that the streaks and or a light hunter is, it's, it's, it's just the, it's just not worth it as far as the investment, because your investment is just a Jenner being able to shoot, 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 go for the legs. And you saw almost every single cataphract that went down, it was, it was legged. Every, almost every single Shadowhawk that went down was legged. So what's better uh, against legs, streaks or medium lasers? And I think that's where maybe even an ember would be okay, but the Jenner is the choice to go with six mediums, no streaks, just get rid of that. So I think that was, um, I think that was it. I think also the maneuverability of the Shadowhawks um, also, you know, trumped the uh, cataphracts. They were able to move around. Cataphracts legs are quite bigger, so we saw them get taken out relatively quickly. I mean, within the first few 30 seconds of a match, I saw, uh, you know, a Shadowhawk go down, then a Cataphract, then a Cataphract, so. Well played by Antar Antares Scorpions, and of course, just like Raffle said, we've got uh, Free Worlds League, the Merit Gunfighters Alliance versus Smoke Adders at 10 p.m. tonight. We will leave the stream up, but uh, let's go ahead and talk a little bit, bit more about that match and breakdown. 
Well, one thing I'd mention is that the Cataphract in that match, even with the Brawl Fit, normally you only bring about an AC 20 and 4 mediums. And in terms of firepower, I the Blackjacks on Antares Scorpion's side would be running like two or three mediums and an AC-20, and that AC-20 is the main punch. So ton for ton, those blackjacks, fragile as they are, are actually almost matching a cataphract's offensive potential. So one thing that, I don't know if you all saw this, but when Antares Scorpions, because they skipped going for the cap, they're able to push up right into the saddle area very quickly, and they actually met the cataphracts first because VSA had set most of their mechs around the tail of the dropship, so those guys actually got there just a little bit late. It's only a couple seconds, but that does allow interior scorpions to focus on only a few mechs in the initial part of the engagement, and that can be a big deal. And especially when those mechs are cataphracts, because cataphracts can be really dangerous. They can put out a lot of firepower if you have certain loadouts, but they are squishy. They are wide, and they are easy to hit in a lot of cases, so that could have factored into it as well, especially with Shadowhawks, which I would categorize as far more maneuverable than Cataphracts. So they were probably able to get uh, better shots, better trades at least on the Cataphracts in those initial moments. I think that... I was just looking for something here. Now, we saw both matches right now, close range brawls, back to back, we talked about being able to close, uh, you know, with an enemy force relatively quickly. Um, they didn't go for cap. Now, I think that's basically the strategy you have to go with is just be aggressive. Um, if you're going to take lights, there's no point in taking a few lights hunters. Go straight for damage potential. Um, I think speed and maneuverability, what's easier to, uh, you know, be able to shoot, um, you know, Shadowhawk? Do you go with a uh, Hunchback? Do you go with a Blackjack? And like you were saying, Siri, is just, just because it's heavier, um, it's also a bigger profile where you could take the same loadout or something similar with a smaller profile, uh, would that serve better? And then obviously that weight can be distributed maybe to a few others. So, you know, obviously it's a trade-off. I mean, we saw uh, Typhus and the Highlander get taken apart by three Shadowhawks in the first match. Um, the Cataphracts were just sort of easy targets. I mean, even when you strip off the arms... Uh, with damage transfer, I mean, even if you weren't shooting at the legs, the cataphract's torso is quite broad, so it's easy to hit, it's easy to shoot. So, um, anyways, well played by both teams. Again, there can only be one winner, so Antonio Scorpions does move on. We still have a few matches later on. Again, we got Smoke Adders versus uh, Free Worlds League, and then we have another big one late tonight, 11.30 uh, p.m. Eastern. That is the 228th. Uh, versus uh, Death Metaband. I think, Raffle, you're actually going to be participating in that, so you will not be here. And, uh, you know, Truth. we're going to be nitpicking. Just you. Just you. Just have, have, That's have. fine. I, I expect only my play to be streamed. And All right. Just blame the entire <laughs> thing on me. It'll be Raffle Cam the entire time. Uh, so, yeah, I know I saw a few people make a few comments about the Spectator Cam. Uh, it, it was chaos and stuff like that. Just a heads up, just to reiterate, uh, we have a full feature list of uh, a document that we have uh, sat down and we've went over it with Raffle and Siri and we have passed that on to PGI. So PGI has that list and as, you know, things move down, down the road, maybe in a month or so, uh, hopefully we'll start getting some of these features implemented. So this is a very early uh, alpha, guys. We know it's sort of frustrating. Sometimes the names cover up stuff. Um, it's not the most uh, user-friendly, but just be aware, we are aware of it and it will be... Uh, it will be better in the future, so. It is a beta tournament, but this is what it's for. Also better than nothing. Like, it is better than nothing. Hell yeah. It's and, awesome. Y and you know, uh, s switching to the first person in the middle of that cluster, it's so difficult seeing what's going on. I love the ability to just put the camera right over 24 mechs in 200, 300 meters, and you, it's just like, holy crap. Um, again, you saw the... the... SRMs look awesome from third person. <laughs> you just see it. <laughs> So, uh, Are you saying you're going to be bringing SRMs? Ooh, it's not at all. Little insight. Said. Yep, right. that's we uh, we've actually tailored our build specifically around what we think would look cool. So we're bringing uh, we painted our mechs black and white. We're bringing large and small pulse lasers. So we're going to be <laughs> the police, and we're just going to run around chasing the other team. Well, that's that's going to happen. Is that is that the, the plan? Deck. Yes, sure. That's our deck. 
Alright guys, so we got a match coming up at 10 p.m. Eastern, and that match is between the Smoke Adders versus Free Worlds League, the Merrick Gunfighters Alliance. That'll be kicking off at 10 p.m., so uh, we're going to be taking a break, and we'll be back. I will probably be streaming some solo play during the matches, you know, while we wait, so uh, just pay attention to uh, my Sean Lang Cicada, or Phil Cicada, or Lang Cicada, whatever you want to call it. BSK is trying yeah, to take credit does for it. it. Have two, does it have two PVCs? Does it not BSK? So, BSK? No, BSK no. I've, I, I've been taking it forever. I claim, I claim it. No, no one else. The first ones to use no, it in the comp match. Though, no, so. I've been using it my life, my life. No. Um. All right, guys. So That's we're gonna take it. We're gonna take a break. Call it food. <laughs> and we'll be back. Breakfast with it. Yeah, guys, this has been the MWO Tournament Series First Engagement Beta brought to you by IGP, PGI, and NGNG. This is Darren and Phil from No Guts, No Galaxy, and we're joined today by all three now, Raffle Waffle, Serial Thrax, and The Magician commentate, commentating on the matches. Uh, big thank you to everybody in the community that's made this possible. Don't forget there will be a giveaway before the final match tonight. It'll be a $15 Ultimate Game Card worth 3,000 MC in-game. Don't forget to follow on our Twitch page here, and uh, yeah, uh, hopefully we'll get some good uh, mech action from Phil uh, while we wait until the ne next match. Good job, everyone.